Hey everyone, Father Steve with you for another edition, another episode of Ask Father Anything. And one of the questions that we're asked so often in the time as priests by Catholics and non-Catholics is, why do priests wear vestments? Uh, why, uh, why, why do you wear those funny robes for? And, and so really for us to understand why the priest dresses this way, uh, it's important for us to know what happens at Mass, what, what takes place at Mass. It isn't just a celebration. It isn't just a gathering of God's faithful. It isn't just a remembrance of the resurrection. It is all of those things. Be assured of that. That's important to know and important for us to, to recognize. But what takes place at Mass is a sacrifice. That isn't just a table. That's an altar. Don't ever call it a table. It's an altar. And so what takes place at the altar is sacrifice. Something comes to an altar to die, to be sacrificed. And so what happens at Mass is the sacrifice of Calvary represented here, here, made real for us. And so the, 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 the temple sacrifice in the Jewish times uh, was done by their priests, by their high priests. People brought animals in to be sacrificed to God, and the blood of the Lamb was then sprinkled and, 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 and immolated before the Lord. And so the priests then wore vestments. And it was very specific. Moses, when he received the word from, from the Lord, and they started the, uh, the, the, the priesthood of Aaron, the Levitical priesthood, uh, God gave very specific instructions to Moses' uh, Moses's family and all of those who followed him um, of how he wanted his priests to dress. And then the temple was built and so the priests of today, the Catholic priesthood, we, we echo and kind of mirror in dress and in sacrifice in some ways that those priests of old. And so that's the first thing that's important for us to know. And so if you saw me out and about, you saw me at the movies, or you saw me at CVS or Texas Roadhouse, my favorite restaurant, you saw me with a Michigan hoodie on, you'd say, oh, there's, there's Father Steve. But if I came to church... I came in Holy Mass and I came out of those doors and came behind the altar with a Michigan hoodie on, you'd say, there's Father Steve, but why is he wearing a Michigan hoodie? And so the priest wears these vestments to set himself apart. And so that's not to say that the priest is better than the people, but in a very real way, it's a specific calling. It's a higher calling. It's a supernatural calling from God to be priest. And so the priest is set apart from the people. I'm chosen as a sinner from among sinners to serve sinners. I'll say that again. I'm chosen as a sinner from among sinners to serve sinners. And so the priest is set apart from God. And so the priest's robes are a ceremonial vesture. And so they're, they're a uniform of this sacred office. And so they're, they're, they're meant effectively to obliterate, to obliterate my personality. My own, I die to myself in that, in that sense as I don these vestments. We say that the priest is in persona Christi. That as the priest is offering the sacrament, specifically, particularly, the holy sacrifice of the Mass, it's now Jesus acting through the priest. And so these, vest these vestments aren't meant to be a show. They're not meant to, to, to give just glory to, to, to the priest. Oh, look how beautiful those vestments are. Not meant to give glory to the seamstress who, who wove them, a beautiful image here of, of Jesus' resurrection. They're not meant to give glory to the, to the person who bought them for us, but they're meant to give glory to God. And so, so the, the, the priest puts these on. He steps aside. Now the person of Christ is, uh, is, is, made, is made present, and then something takes place, this sacrifice. And so Jesus dies on the cross. He is the lamb that was slain for us. And so the mass actually is a royal marriage feast. So we often hear, you know, as, as Jesus died on the cross for us, some of us might say that was the beginning of the church, the birthday of the church. But in actuality, it was, it was a wedding banquet. It was a wedding feast. And so Holy Mass is a royal marriage feast of the Lamb. And so the priest should dress up. <laughs> he should dress up for entrance into the court. And so the robes should therefore have a, have a beautiful dignity. 
And so this is called a chasuble. And so it should give royal dignity to this, uh, to, to this stature of priest. And so why is it that a priest should dress like a king? Um, it's because these, these vestments remind us all of all of our kingly nature. As we were baptized, we were all baptized priests, prophets, and kings. And so a priest dresses in a regal manner as he enters into the wedding banquet of the lamb slain for us. He's called into this regal court. He stands at the head of the people and he offers their sacrifice as we're all priests, we're all prophets, and we're all kings. And so it's a reminder to all of us that we're, we're baptized into a family of God, that we're baptized as his sons and daughters, we're brought into this family, and as brothers and sisters of the Lord Jesus, that he invites us into his kingship. And so um, the, uh, the great understanding of, of, of who the priest is and, and why he dons these vestments are important for us. And so as we, uh, as we are separated from Mass at this time, let's just continue just to pray for our priests and just to, just to meditate and just to pray for ourselves also in this understanding that we're all called as sons and daughters of the Father. We're baptized as priests, prophets, and kings. We share, we don't share all in the ministerial priesthood, but we share in what's called the priesthood of, of the people. And so um, we're all called in that way to offer our sacrifice. We're not able to offer it here at the altar, but we can offer our sacrifice at homes in a particular way as we're separated right now during this quarantine. So continue to pray for me and, and continue to submit some great questions, uh, trying to get through as many of them as possible, trying to you know, get two or three of them out a week. Uh, feel free to email me at askfatheranything at gmail.com. God bless you and know of my prayers.